Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's session. Today we will go for chemistry paper six for 2024, October, November. First variant. Let's go. For first question, they want us to separate copper carbonate, which is insoluble in water, and sodium sulfate that is soluble in water. The student tried to obtain pure insoluble salt and pure soluble salt from the mixture. So this is the four step that they carry out. First step, they add distilled water for the mixture and stir. This dissolves sodium sulfate and then the copper carbonate is unable to dissolve. Then we filter the mixture. So the residue will be the insoluble copper carbonate and then the filtrate contain sodium sulfate. Then the filtrate heat it and until the crystal starts to form so this we will get sodium sulfate crystal and then the residue we use a filter paper to dry so the question asks state what happened to sodium sulfate in step one is obviously dissolved b state what is removed from the filtrate in step three we heat it until the crystal form water is evaporated C. Describe what must be done after the filtrate has been heated in step 3 to obtain a larger amount of sodium sulfate crystal. After heat until crystal, we need to let it cool until the crystals form. Part D. State what must be done to the residue before it is allowed to dry in step 4 to obtain pure copper carbonate. So this is the residue when we filter anything, let's say we filter the sand, they might have some water remain there and then the water here contain the sodium sulfate. So we need to try to make sure all the sodium sulfate removed to the filtrate. Then we need to wash with distilled water. Then last, identify the substance removed from copper carbonate in D1, sodium sulfate. This is for first question, five marks for separation of soluble and insoluble salt. Okay, question two is a data analysis question. The question will give you all the information. The question says they are investigating the reaction between aqueous magnesium sulfate and aqueous barium nitrate. This is a precipitation of barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is a precipitate and remain magnesium nitrate. All nitrate is soluble. The question says fill a burette with aqueous of these. Run some aqueous sodium sulfate out of the burette so that the level of aqueous magnesium sulfate is on the burette scale. So to prevent there is any air gases or empty spaces that will affect your reading. And then fill the second burette with aqueous barium nitrate. Again, you run some barium nitrate out. It's the same reason. And then you add 4 cm cube of magnesium sulfate from the first burette into 10 cm cube measuring cylinder and then add one cm cube of these using the same measuring cylinder and then place a stopper in the top of the measuring cylinder and invert the measuring cylinder several times to allow them to mix evenly leave the measuring cylinder for 15 minutes why we want to leave it for 15 minutes because we need to make sure all the precipitate will fall to the bottom will deposit it will settle out Record the level of precipitate on the measuring cylinder scale, rinse the measuring cylinder with distilled water, and then repeat the experiment with more barium nitrate. More barium nitrate. So here, the thing that we change is the amount of barium nitrate, and then the dependent variable is the amount of precipitate that is formed. There are different volume of barium nitrate. So we just list it down according to what they say. We just copy back from the front. And this question, they only says barium nitrate volume will change, but the volume of magnesium sulfate is remain at 4.0. Make sure all of them have the same accuracy, which is all have one decimal place. Then you need to count the level of precipitation on the measuring cylinder scale. So you need to read one by one. Here is 1.8. Here is 3.0, 3.6. And all 4.6 after this. Part B, complete a suitable skill on y-axis and plot the results from experiment 1 to 8. 
So we set the scale for Y, which is the level of precipitation. The maximum precipitation that we have is 4.6. So one, two, three, four, five, just nice. After set the scale and then we extract the info when it is 1.0, it is 1.2. When it is 1.5, it is 1.8. Okay, after we plot all the points, then it says draw two straight lines of best fit through your points. The first straight line should be for the first five experiments. So one, two, three, four, five. So we need to draw a straight line and must be extended to zero, zero. The second straight line should be for the last three experiment and must be horizontal. So it's like this, this is the horizontal line. Extend the straight line so they can cross each other. So you can extend a bit and ensure that they are crossing to each other. Okay, so like this, five marks. And the question says, Deduce the level of precipitate of the measuring cylinder scale when the experiment reported with 2.8 cm cube of barium nitrate. So we refer back here, 2.8. 2.8 is here. So make sure you label on the graph. And then you get it is 3.4. Then you can write your answers is 3.4. Then the question says, the student repeats the experiment using 6.5 cm cube of barium nitrate. 6.5 is already here. So they say, predict the level of precipitation on the measuring scale. And we already know, start from here, it's already reached maximum, which all of the precipitate level are maintained at 4.6. So here we'll expect it's again 4.6. The reason is because all the magnesium sulfates already reacted. That's why no matter how many barium nitrate we add in, it's no longer increase the number of precipitation because another factor is limiting there. Then E, they want you to sketch another experiment that using barium nitrate of half concentration. Okay, if they want half concentration, which means the product that we form will be half of it also. So here initially it is 3.6. So it will reduce to... 1.8 and then let's say here is 1.2 becomes 0 0.6 then you join them and then make sure this is a straight line because it haven't reached the maximum level yet it haven't reached 4.6 so make sure it's continuously to go up until it reached 4.6 F, suggest why the measuring cylinder is inverted several times after the aqueous barium nitrate is added. As I say, you need to invert it so that it can mix the solution or mix the reactant, the both solutions, so that it can react well. Suggest why the measuring cylinder is left to stand for the level of precipitation is recorded. So we we'll leave it for 15 minutes because we want the precipitate to settle out. Or you can say they fall to the bottom. The volume of both aqua solutions are measured using burette. Give reason why burette are used rather than measuring cylinder. Every time they ask this, you just mentioned it's more accurate. Suggest why burette are used rather than the volumetric pipette. We know volumetric pipette is very, very accurate, but we won't use this because we need the scale, because the volume are not fixed volume. That's why we cannot use volumetric pipette. If it's a fixed volume, then we can use the pipette because pipette can only measure for one volume. But burette, the good thing is they can measure for different, different volume. They have different scale on it. That is question three. Question three is always a task for sort, but it's very easy now because most of the information are given, you just refer back to the back page. No need to memorize for paper six question. Of course, the questions, if they appear in paper two or four, you need to know. But in paper six, it's just a free mark. This question says they test two solid, which is T and U. T is lithium sulfite. So we just refer back to the table. Lithium test is this, sulfite test is this. The first part, they say the student carries out flame test on T. So we just refer back to lithium. They say the observation is the red flame. 
just copy the info that next part the student dissolve the remaining solid t to form solution t the student divide solution t into two portion no matter they divide into how many portion solution t is just lithium sulfide to test the test tube containing acidified potassium manganate so this we test with acidified potassium manganate so the color change is stated here is from purple to colorless so it's just copy from the information and part c to the second portion of t the student add excess dilute nitric acid the gas produced we are turning through the paper soak in the acidified KMnO4 white so the thing that will change KMnO4 into white is about the gas test gas test we refer back we found that sulfur dioxide is the only thing that can change potassium magnate from purple to colorless so we can confirm the gas produces sulfur dioxide this question do not say name the gas so that's why you can write sulfur dioxide in the full name or you can write a symbol also can to the solution produced in c1 the student adds aqueous barium nitrate what is the observation so the one that adds barium nitrate is this they are testing you whether you know this is sulfate. But the thing that we have is sulfite. So that's why you shouldn't have any observation because the test is for this, but we have this only. So you just tell me no changes. Next test, they are using another sort, which is solid U, contain one cation and one anion. So here are the tests for this solid. So they are dissolved into water to form solution U and put in three tests. The first test telling you they add aqueous ammonia. This is a test for cation. And then from the table here, we can confirm it's either chromium or ion. But we cannot differentiate them because the question do not mention when we put excess ammonia, it's either insoluble or the precipitate will turn brown on the surface, so we are unable to directly confirm whether it's chromium or ion. We can only know it's either chromium or ion 2 until now. Second test, the second portion of solution U added one cm cube of dilute nitric acid and then a few drop of aqueous silver nitrate. So when we use silver nitrate, it's to test group 7, which is chlorine, bromine, iodine. So we know bromine will form white precipitate, Bromine will form cream prostate and then iodine will form yellow prostate. If you do not remember this, the table also show you. So here is the yellow prostate, so we can confirm it's iodide. Ion is here. Test 3. They use chlorine and the solution turns brown. So this test they do not give you in the table, but we know this is under group 7 displacement reaction. So this place out brown color solutions means that we can confirm it initially have iodide. If it's initially have bromide, the color that it will form is orange. So this is what we need to know. Based on this information, they ask you to identify two cations that the test observed in here. So the two cations that are possible to be here include iron 2 plus and chromium 3 plus. It's from here. Part E, describe an additional test that a student can do to confirm one of the two cations identified in D for solid Q. So like just now what I say, we add excess aqueous ammonia. By referring to the table here, so if it's ion 2, it will turn brown near the surface on standing. So we just copy this whole thing there. So all info are provided, you just extract from the information. And then identify the anion in solid U. So test 2 and test 3 already confirmed to you it's actually iodide ion. Question 4 says beetroot is a colored vegetable. The color is caused by a mixture of water-soluble colored compound. Plan an experiment to find out how many water-soluble color compounds there are in a beetroot. So this question is obviously deal with the chromatography. Before we write it down, let me tell you how it works. First of all, we need to put beetroot with some water and then we crush it by using pestle and mortar so that all the colored compound inside can come out and dissolve into the water. And then we need to put it into a chromatography paper 
we drop a drop of the solution here and then we need to make sure this is the water and then the water is at the bottom of the chromatography paper and then we allow it to settle and move up then we see how many spot it will form means that how many colored compound that is soluble in water so just like this then we just write it in words start from how we extract the colored compound so we add water to the beetroot and then we crush it using petal and mortar after done then we need to know how to separate it so we place a drop of liquid on the chromatography paper then the bottom of the paper we dip in water and then last how the result shown how many colored compound so we just refer to the how many number of spots will represent how many colored substance inside just like that then this experiment done so chromatography is just like this so this is the end of today's paper don't forget to subscribe like and share my youtube channel if you have any question please feel free to comment here See you in the next class. Bye-bye.